today we got, I'm excited, we got C.T. Fletcher. Um, again, somebody I've known for over three decades, um, and he's incredible, incredible guy. And he's just, he's 100% who you see he is. Truth of the matter, though, most of the older time guys, the OGs, are like that because we didn't have to, um, and we were not going to put on a facade of who we were. So who you see is who we are. Um, we didn't grow up in the era of social media to where if you put on a gimmick, uh, you may get a lot of followers. So that just wasn't us. C.T. Fletcher, get in here. <laughs> well, you know what, uh, Titan, I am honored to be on here with you. Uh, like you said, we've known each other for a long, long time. And I want to start out by saying, Mike O'Hearn. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that because we know what that means. I love that. Uh, yeah. Uh, for let me explain to the people who don't know what that means. Uh, which, you know, it might be a few, uh, but you know, many many years ago when uh, me and Mike were competing together, and you know, of course he don't look like it, but <laughs> he was back there then. He was a youngster. And uh, before he got to the contest, I mean, everybody was, oh, man, Michael Hearn is coming. Michael Hearn is coming. And they were all excited. And, sh <laughs> and I had my hater shoes on. And I was hating big time. I was like, man, Michael Hearn, <laughs> before he got there. But, uh, you know, what? I love the guy. You know, we, we've been, uh, he's just as pretty as he was back then. And one of the things that when I dislike a lot <laughs> back then, and, uh, and you know, a lot of guys dislike this about one of my idols, which was Muhammad Ali. Mike had the same, the same, the uh, same pers persona. He was a good-looking guy that would whoop your ass. <laughs> and same goes with Ali, man. It's, I mean, uh, uh, old rough, rough, beat-up-looking guys have that's their worst nightmare. To have a good looking guy that can also whoop. <laughs> that, that's it, man. So Mike, Mike was a, a good looking guy that was also strong as fuck. So I was hating big time. And now look at him, look at him now. He looked the same as he did 30 years ago. And what's worse, <laughs> what's worse than all that, you're just as fucking strong as you were 30 years ago. What the hell is that about? <laughs> I, I, I got to start with that. I got to start with the longevity that we've had. Um, you are the pinnacle of, I think most of the people would say, dude, wrap it up. You had a heart transplant. Stop. What's your problem? That's not you. It's no. never been you. No. So what is that? What is that in you? It's like, I never even thought about that. What is that? Uh, you know, I could, I'm, I could very well ask you the same thing, but um, I mean, you go just as hard, it's just as, as hard as you did 35 years ago. And you don't need anybody uh, standing over your shoulder. You don't need anybody yelling at you. You don't need a, an audience. You're going to do this. And, you know, it's, it's some people that have that drive, have that initiative. It's it's few and far in between the ones that can last that long. You know, a lot of people, you know, they go at it hard for three, four years. And you, you would think that, it, 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 but but then it tapers off. You know, you'll see, you see guys that are way out of shape now. And they say, oh, you know, when I was young, I used to be in the gym just like you all the time. I used to train but they lose it. Somewhere along the line, they lose it. But it's a love. That's why I call myself an iron addict because it's it's an addiction for me, Mike. I, I know you, I know you know. When I'm sitting um in the hospital bed, when I was in my hospital bed, uh just had a heart transplant, somewhere between life and death, I'm laying there thinking about damn. I wonder if I ever be able to curl again. I wonder if I ever be able to bench again. And I, you know, I got one foot in the grave, man. But that was on my mind because that is Michael Hearn. That is C.T. Fletcher. Weightlifting is us. It's synonymous with us. It's part of us. It's part of our fabric, our being. 
Yeah, I can't. I can't quit if I wanted to. <laughs> is it weightlifting? Stay with me on this. Is it weightlifting or the battle of weightlifting? And 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 the thoughts that go through our minds as we're freaking doing it. I see CT get down and do inclined tricep extensions, and I'm over there foaming at the mouth, going, <laughs> "Done. I want my piece." Yeah. What, is is it that or is it hey i just want to go in and weight lift and, and do my three sets of five and then eat my chicken and i'm done oh yeah now we absolutely are on the same wavelength so we're going to understand this i don't know if everybody else will be able to understand it do. yeah i hope so too but i mean you're not gonna when mike said he'd be foaming at the fucking mouth waiting on me to get done with my set so he could get his chance to get in there and do his. So everybody ain't gonna understand that, shit, Mike. But I tell you what, I understand that. Shit. I understand it very well. It's when you are the man in the arena. When you're used to being the man in the arena, you cannot wait. You cannot wait to display what you can can do. I can't wait. If you're a, a, like a true champion, I think a true champion and whatever that a true champion is, boxing, wrestling, whatever, if you're a true champion, you can't wait for another really good challenger to come along because you want to display, you want to show him and everybody else why you are the champion, why you are the best, why you hold the belt. I can't wait. Oh, my goodness. The Titan is coming. Oh, my God, we're going to have a battle. See, <laughs> but everybody's not going to understand that. Yeah, I, I try to express that to the youngsters, and, and it's very few and far between. It, it's years before I, I meet one and I go, this kid has it. Yep. You know, but then it's years of, hey, I really want to do this. And I admit, and it's like, he don't got it. Nope. I know I'm, I'm hearing what he's saying, but I don't see it in his eyes. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even need to, they don't even need to say it and you'll know it. Absolutely. And so <laughs> when back in the day, when we were lifting in the eighties and nineties and we were doing powerlifting meets and, and, and getting just after it, there was a mentality of beat the guy before you kind of mentality. And you really, you really lived that. And, 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 you know, so how can these kids today get back to that? How can they get back to that mentality of it's, it's good. There's a certain amount of workouts you should do, but sometimes get into a tussle. Take <laughs> yeah. off the neck, the go. So, oh man. You, uh, you know, my, I, I'm sorry. I catch you off. Go ahead, no, no, no. I just, I'm curious on you that, how do you tell these kids today? How do you tell them to take the leash off? Get into a tussle a little bit. Get ugly. Get nasty. If you lose, you lose. <laughs> you know what, uh, Mike? They, they, they've they been so uh, pampered. And, you know, so many people. So we have so many experts today that are telling them, you know, you're going to hurt yourself. Don't do this. And, you know, I must applaud you. I see you doing some of the old school that we used to do, you know, 35 years ago to now is harmful. It's going to hurt you. I seen you doing behind the neck presses and I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody was doing them 35 years ago and we didn't have no fucking Dr. Seuss telling us that this was going to hurt us, you know, or fucking our shoulders was going to come out of joint. It was nobody back there telling us that this was going to hurt. And we did that shit. And oh man, the bench press it helped our bench press it, our shoulders. Uh, behind the neck press, one of my favorite exercises during 35 years. No shoulder problems. I got a whole lot of heart problems, but no shoulder problems. <laughs> you know, so I might like, if they could maybe take a list, take a look at some of the old school. So they got they got videos now, the old school, the way the old school guys trained and what their philosophy on training was. People like Tom Platts. I mean it. There, there's experts that will look at Tom Platt's videos, critique how he squat, how he did leg extensions. They'll critique his form, 
and had the nerve, you know, to critique this guy who had the best pair of legs in bodybuilding history. And then they'll, they'll say he's not doing it right, or his form is not good, or he's not, he's doing too. How to shut the fuck up, man. Come on, man. How you gonna argue with that. results? <laughs> it, it comes to, and I, I think, uh, I don't know who said it, but education takes you only so far, experience finishes it. And Tom Plaz was my first training partner here. And I learned so much from him, but it was a fight. Every leg day was a fight. You know, if he got, I don't care what it was. I had to get one more. And I was a 20 year old kid. I said, I don't care, but it taught us heart. Oh and yeah. Maybe I overtrained. Okay. But the heart and, and the, and what I mean by heart is not the cardiovascular, not all that stuff. It was more the grit of the heart of going, Oh, I want this. <laughs> you know most people go, I'm skipping leg day. I ran to the most fierce human alive in history to train legs with. I wanted that fight. I wanted to go into the water and wrestle Jaws. You know, that's the mentality yeah. I had. And I wanted to go to CT's place. And I wanted to train with him and the crew. And I wanted to see what was up. Um, it just yeah. seems like a lot of the heart of health and fitness. And when I say, and, and both of us, and I think you agree with me, when we talk about health and fitness or lifting for us, that could be piano for you. That could be the violin. It could be singing. It could be swimming. It could be whatever that is to where you hear that inner voice. And it's saying, this is our time. This is us. This is the most alive you're going to feel today. This is, enjoy this. And it's also got the negative voice. So, you know, hey, stop. You've done enough. Yeah. Quit. You're over. Your time's done. Get the freak out of here. I love that voice. <laughs> but I, I, do you agree with me that when we talk about weightlifting, that could be anybody's muse? Absolutely. Whatever you're passionate about, whatever, you know, that you're willing to do. It, 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 I always I say this, you know, I tell them, hey, I don't wash windows. I don't flip pancakes and I don't cut grass. I'm a motherfucking weightlifter. <laughs> I pick it up and I put it down. You know, that's me. That's what I do. You know, weight, a weightlifter, CT function is synonymous. We're the same thing. And whatever it is, you know, I never encourage my kids or my grandkids or whatever to be weightlifters. I encourage them to do what makes them happy, what they are passionate about, what draw, what they are drawn to be that, and then go after that with everything you have. So it doesn't matter if you're a weightlifter or not. This applies to you. <laughs> I I think that you and I can agree that it's funny that people today, they go, well, you do this because you get paid for it. And I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> yeah, okay, we didn't do this as teenagers. We did this as teenagers because we knew we were going to get in a fight with somebody. And we wanted to, <laughs> if we're going to get in a fight, I want to kick his ass, not get my ass kicked. Yeah. And then there was something that clicked and we're like, we're really like this. And then, yeah. wow, we're pretty strong and we're, we're kind of crushing this. We didn't make that kind of money. And again, even though I signed with Weeder when I first got it, it wasn't like, they think it's millions. Yeah. <laughs> we do okay. this because we love it. We yes, do this. absolutely. And we'd still do this if we did it for free. Yep, absolutely. I mean, if you do something, I mean, every day, that you would you know do for nothing like it's what we actually did what i did for many many years i mean i didn't get on youtube or anything until i was 53 years old and i some would say including me way past my prime and i had no idea and that's the first time in my life that i ever made any money from weightlifting was uh when the youtube thing came around before then <laughs> i didn't i wasn't making shit. but i loved it I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And, you know, I, I would do it. I I didn't give a fuck. It was midnight. I didn't give a damn if anybody <laughs> else was there. I was going to get my workout in, whether you, you know, whether I had anybody there saying, come on. I didn't need nobody to say, come on. I, I This is me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Shit. You do what you want to do, but I'm going to do this. Shit. You said this earlier when we first got on. You said, 
I don't need somebody to yell for me. I don't need somebody to be there for me. I'm going to lift and I'm going to lift no matter. You can come with me. I'm going. Yep. And you said through this whole discussion, you said the word passion and you keep saying passion, passion, passion. You don't say motivated. Yeah. Now, explain the difference to me what motivation means to you and what passion means to you, C.T. Fletcher. A motivation motivation is an outside source. You need something other than what's inside you to, to stimulate you into doing something. I need an outside, you know, I got to listen to a certain tape. I got to listen to the certain guy, uh, outside stimulus. Passion comes from within. You don't need a damn thing. The motive, if you're passionate about it, you all you need is your self. You don't need anything else, any outside stimulus from anywhere. Uh, but if, if you need some type of motivation from some outside source, then then that's motivation. But if you if you're passionate about it, then it springs from the inside. You don't need a damn thing. I don't need no cheerleaders. I don't need no applause. I don't need a damn thing. But oh, Rust waits man that's Just it. So you know you have one of the biggest cheerleaders at 12 percent, 150 pounds mona marison over here <laughs> one of your biggest cheerleaders just so you know if you ever do need someone to spot you or, or, or slap you upside the head to get a lift <laughs> mona do it. Well, well i'm i'm her i'm i'm her biggest fan too so it's it's, it's uh mutual <laughs> i love that um i'm gonna put you on the spot here I want you to try to help these people out there today. If it starts at motivation, which is temporary, I think you and I agree on, could it go to passion? I absolutely believe it can. Uh, motivation for some people is, you know, very, very important. They need that kick in the butt. They need somebody like Michael Hearn to tell them to, to shut the f up and eat that shit. You know, they need somebody, uh, you know, to they a lot of people rely on that and they need it. And that's, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. And then once they get the kick in the ass, the motivation to get up there and they start doing it, then it can turn into a passion. But some people really need that. And some people are born with that passion, that, that passion for competition. Like Michael Hearn, I can't wait to, you, you, you want to be in there. You've got to be in there. You, you look for the challenge. You look for it, man. And see, that's that's something you have to be born with. But some people need a little kick in that. And that's what we're here for. That's what, that's what I'm here for, man. Old, old man's still here. If they need a kick, I got a 13 boot ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. As, as you continue to build, because, you know, we competed so long ago, you know, when you sit back and we think about it, it's like, man, we were just punk kids. And, 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 and now we're the, we're the Albert Beckles, you know what I yep, mean? We're, we're those guys now. Yep. And so what can you say to these guys out there, these young ones that are coming in that are, are starstruck? <sighs> trying to figure out how to put this correctly are starstruck of, of the fame that the other kids are getting and not them how would they stay to or true to their path um i guess the best way i'd say because like when i came in you know it's chris cormier flex wheeler and all of us and golds and stuff and 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 i was there yes and i was getting in the magazines but i wasn't there with them they were you know, it was like Flex was the next guy. And and and, and so I stayed, I, I guess for me, I was like, I like the fight so much. I didn't need to rush. But these kids today seem to, they need to be rushed. They need to be, I need to be a champion next month. I need to see the changes in the body. I want to bench what CT benched within the year. And it's like, ah. Uh, it, it takes time. What can you say to them if you can? I know that's a tough one because uh, you and me just, again, we were the guys in the arena. We liked the fight. Love it. Love it. And, uh, you know, I, it, it, I'm it, i going to tell you the truth, uh, Mike. It, it kind of pisses me off. 
I get a I get DMs, you know, from kids that was, you know, I the CT I've been working out hard for two years and it's I'm just it's not coming fast enough. My fan base is not building up fast enough, and I'm not just not where I want it. I'm like, you know, two years. <clears throat> First of all, tell somebody who gives a fuck. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> two years, you've been working out two years and it's not coming fast enough. And they they feel um entitled, Mike. They feel entitled, like uh, you know, I could you Oh man, I get it all the time. Could you help me? Could you um, uh, help me? I'm trying so hard. My career, I've been at this for three years now, two years, three years, and my career is going. You know, and I I post these kids a lot on my page. I try to help them out, but I tell them, you know, you cannot expect to make it. I mean, you haven't, you think that's a long time. You have, I tell them, I didn't get on YouTube till I was 53 years old. It didn't happen. Those other, all the years before that was nothing. I mean, and, and you, you're complaining, you know, that was 40 years before I even got a dime for lifting weights. 40 years of lifting weights before I made a dime at it. If you don't have that kind of passion, that kind of drive, I mean, you're going to wither and fall away anyway. If you if, if you expect somebody to hand you something on a fucking silver platter, then you you know you, it's you. <laughs> it sounds, it's true. It sounds like they're chasing they're chasing fame. Yep. Chasing money. Yep. And what happens if you chase those things? Oh man, are you going to be a fucking disappointed? That's what's going to happen because like everybody else is doing that. If if the 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 best reason not to do something is because everybody else is doing it. That is the best reason not to do it because every fucking, I'm doing it because everybody else is doing it. Uh, uh, uh. No, no, no. Michael Hearn, the Titan, is an original. He's an original. There's not another one like him, man. So. That's what said you look for your originality, what makes you different, what separate don't you don't want to be like everybody else. Who that's dull as who the fuck wants to be like everybody else? Some carbon copy. Now uh, I'm a I'm a carbon copy of Michael Hearn. Nah, I'm a, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not, my <laughs> See, I think that's what's great about you too, is is there's uh, it, it, I don't know, maybe Denzel is that old school mentality that Paul Newman is old school, but they're just, they're just different. They're so different. There's, there's C.T. Fletcher, there's Lee Haney, there's Lee Labrada, completely different humans. There's no similarity. And today, if I go on social media, it's an echo. Yep. Every guy's saying the same thing. Every guy looks the same. Everything, it's like, wow, they just... There's a hundred of these dudes I just saw in the last five minutes. Yep. There's no originality. And I don't know if that's an old school thing or something or, or, or people have programmed. If you can root whatever that 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 C.T. Fletcher 20-year-old and, and just – I guess my question here would be this. Again, kind of remove yourself from this because we were different. I, I get that. But what would you tell the 20-year-old kid? All right. What what do you tell my son Titan when he gets to 15 and uh, he's not famous enough yet? Uh, it wasn't handed to him. Dad was pretty known. Whatever. Um I I want the fame right now. What would the what would be the first thing that you would say to him? Uh, the first thing I would say to him is the same thing I tell my son Samson, <laughs> my son Samson, who decided to be a weightlifter. I mean, the worst possible occupation he could. He decided he wanted to be a weightlifter. And, you know, I told him, "Hey, uh, be whatever you want to be. I'm going to be behind you. It doesn't matter what it is." And I would tell your son that you know dad's gonna love you no matter what you decide to be but if you want to be a weightlifter then i would do exactly what dad did this this is the path i follow and be as original as possible don't try to be 
a carbon copy of that. He's already done that. Be yourself, be your own individual, and don't don't be afraid of what people think of you. <laughs> How old were you? How old were you when you didn't give a f? Oh, I don't you like me or don't like me. This is who I am. When? How old were you? Uh, far back as I can remember, probably three or four. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, I'm going to say it, man. I got so many. Uh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to put it out there, and you know, I have lost so many uh, opportunities in this field that we're in because of that attitude. You know, uh, so you think this amount of money is going to get me to be more mainstream, to be more corporate or to curb my attitude or curb my tongue. You think that you can uh, buy me and get me to conform into the way you want me to be for this amount of dollars? Oh, you with the wrong mother. <laughs> I mean, I come up broke. I be, I'm used to being broke and I was broke and happy. So I can be those two things and I know I can. So once you know that you can be broke and happy and monthly, you know, it's, it's hard to put them up. Not giving a f is one of the most powerful tools that a person can have. Not giving a f <laughs> I think that's, man, the wisdom you're dropping today, I want to say thank you for. But I, it's, I, I can hear the 20 year olds going, man, but man, if, if I get the million, if I get the million followers, if I get the million bucks, if you're willing to do whatever it takes to get that stuff, I don't want you around me because mm -mm. I don't know you, you're willing to do anything yeah. for that stuff. Yeah. I, I'm, I want the person to go through the foxhole and go, I don't, I don't, that's not, you know, it, it, and you and I have been in this business long enough to see those people that are willing to not sell out in that sense. Yeah. Um, they just stayed who they were. This is who I am. This is, you like it. You don't like it. Okay. I'm cool with that. I don't got no problem with that. Yeah. And, it's funny, but it seems like the real ones continue. They last. The they Barry DeMay, the Lee Haney, the yep. Eddie Cohen. It, it's like they're still here. Yep. They they're last. still they're still doing their thing. The uh, which which I love. Um, obviously, those are three bright individuals again that I named, but they didn't sell out to. Hey, will you say this? Will you do this? No, that's not what I believe or how would you do this. And so, and CT Absolutely. is a, a pinnacle of, a pinnacle of, of that. I went and guest posed in Seattle and very, very great people up there. Um, and they, uh, uh, the promoter pulled me to the side and said, um, hey, I heard you were uh, saying some profanity and stuff. <laughs> you, you you worked out with CT and that stuff, and I go, no, I, I never, I never swear and stuff. He goes, okay, but you're hanging out. I go, yeah, he's one of the greatest people you're ever gonna meet. And he goes, and he was trying to go the other way with it. I'm like, no, that's you can't do that to my guy. <laughs> that's my guy. That's who he. And he and he doesn't mean harm with it. He's just it's an emphasis on what he believes and how he talks. And it's like it's who he is. And it's like leave it alone. He's so original, and we need that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I I can I can uh, I can see that conversation happening big time. You're not hanging out with that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like man, it, it's it's you know me. I only are hang around with good people. And they should have known that. But it's like I, I thought it was funny because of the fact that it's like you're gonna get hit by by people that are good people, but they don't know you. And I think one of the things that Mona always says when, when people are talking about, and this is for everybody out there, if, if people are talking about you, tell them to call you. Mm. You know, if they don't got your number, they don't know you. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's over. And yeah. that's the great thing about CT is that CT is somebody that I've known for 30 years that uh, means the world to me beyond lifting. It, it's it's who he is. It's it, it's not the lifting. that. That was over in the mid '90s of, of the lifting aspect of it. It was just who you are as a person that I love, and 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 the goodness that you give to the world. Somebody asked about uh, basically old school training when we did, or, or what our training was like in the '90s. I guess relative today, 
What's your take on that? If, if you can, I, I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm explaining it well enough. Yeah, uh, well, I had, uh, uh, I started with a guy named Jim Britt. Jim Britt was my uh, uh, trainer. And from Compton, we started in a garage in Compton and Jim Britt, we, we would go in there and this is where, you know, the mentality, your mentality of, you know, uh, when you trained with Tom Platts and you had to do one more spot than him. Well, me and Jim Britt had that same type of mentality. I was a young kid and Britt would come in there and he, you know, I got where I could outmax him. But Britt would say, hey, you, you're you not going to outrep me. I don't give a damn what happens. And we went in there one day, Mike, on a weekend, on a Saturday. And we put 315 on the bar and we benched 315 back and forth, me and him back and forth from eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night because nobody was going to give up. Nobody, I said, I'll, I'll be here, God damn it, <laughs> until you can die, until they put your head stuck. He said, me too, my let's go. <laughs> and we were sitting for 12 hours, repping 315 back and forth, back and forth. It's, it's, that type of uh, mentality, like you said, you, you when you, you wanted to train with the monster, you wanted to take Jaws on, you wanted to take Gargantua on, you wanted to go up against Godzilla and just see who the fucking baddest is, man. Let's see. You talk a good game. You say you the baddest. I say I'm the baddest. Now let's find out for real, man. That's that's the mentality that we had back then. You know, now nowadays, you know, you got guys scared compete yeah they're scared that some you know what if i lose what if i man if i if i'm in there and i go out swinging that's the thing can i, I want to go out and swing i'm gonna go out giving it my fucking best i'm gonna go out giving it my all he might get me but god damn it he gonna know he was in a fight you know that's the kind of mentality we had i wish i could show you this video i had of robbie robinson over here and we were talking and robbie does this I go, Robbie, when are you gonna stop lifting? And and Robbie Robinson goes, Mike, when I do this, and I got one more rep. Oh, oh, and it's just put the point of I'm gonna lift till the day I'm done. Yeah, like that's and it. That Robbie Robinson mentality, and, and what you said about going into the gym. These guys listening today, I don't think they understand. Like back when we uh, I was doing the martial arts and the football and all that stuff, we would grab the garbage can purposely and put it next to the squat rack and say, okay, let's get ready for legs. Cause we know we're all going to throw up. Yep. We're going to train till somebody throws up or all of us throws up and <laughs> those are the workouts in the mentality. But to answer this guy's question, he asked today, I agree with CT that there, there is a, understanding of going to the gym train tear the muscle down but it's got to the point of where it's going train till you get the muscle torn down um that's cool and stuff but i guess for me and you we still like the fight we still like to go leash off at times i i mean it, it's there's something about the character of the workout more than the workout Absolutely. I got I have to ask you this before before you get me off of here, Mike. Look, okay. I, I have you ever read comments where you say you do a, a, a squat like like your birthday squats, you do a hundred hundred in reps with uh uh whatever you, the, the way I forget what, what was it, four or five? You did the hundred three fifteen for I, I don't know, guy who knows and then you read the comments and some of the comments will say, Oh, my back hurts just watching him do that. <laughs> Don't you, it's like you're that weak. Yeah. <laughs> my my shoulder just got blown out by watching you do. Yeah, oh, you man. are. We're basically at the age of most people's grandparents, and we're sitting here crushing weights that they're never going to even bench. <laughs> you know, and they're like, "Oh, this hurts." It's like, yeah. It's annoying. It is annoying that oh, it's look, so uh, fragile. Uh, Mike, yeah, you, Mike is being nice. I, I, I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. But it, it, when you watch Michael Hearn do 50, 60 reps with something, and you say it makes your back hurt, your shoulders hurt, watching him do it, you are screaming to the world, I am a 
That's what you're doing. You are screaming to the world that I am a. That's what you're doing. Now that's that's the that's the facts of the matter. Mike is being nice. And, you I'm know, being nice. Like, you're being honest, though. Yeah. You're being honest because it really is. But it it's. I hate that the social media is pushing them that way Man. to where I wish there would still be those guys, those old school mentality guys. And, and I, I just, that's why I think I like hanging out with guys like you or like, you know, Robbie and, and it's like Robbie is so removed from social media completely that when I say, Hey, behind the neck press is, is bad. Society says he looks at me like I just said there's aliens on the planet. <laughs> like, what are you even talking about? Yeah. I've been doing this for 60. What do you say? 67 years. He's been doing it yeah. and he's so healthy where everybody else by 30, their shoulders are bad. Yeah. What's that telling you? It's telling you that whatever you're doing at 30, you've done it incorrectly. Wait, we're not saying behind the neck presses are bad. What we're saying is doing them wrong is bad, but doing yeah. a squat is bad. Doing a bicep curl is bad. Walking across yeah. the street and, and twisting your ankle is bad. Those things happen. We're not saying it doesn't happen, but we're saying make the body strong like CT so you can keep going and keep fighting and keep hitting it. Man, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a wonder to me, man. But, yeah, I, I had to get that in before I got you off here tight. That's no, right. I... I I, I'm so glad that you're 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 straight up with them. I I, I try to coddle them a little bit, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, if you want some coddling, you're in the wrong place when you're talking to CT. I won't coddle you, that's for sure. So, yeah. uh, Titan, I got it. my grandkids are screaming for me. Go. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go see what they want. But I I really I really enjoyed this, and uh, we got to do it again soon. I love you, brother. I love you, and uh, give little Titan a hug and a kiss for me, and I will. get a hug for me, too. I will. We'll see you soon. Okay. See you. Thanks, kiddo. <laughs> wow. Wow. Man. C.T. Fletcher. Um, so, I know before we got on with C.T., somebody asked a question, should I do this or do that or do this or that? If you want to go do somebody's program because they said it and it sounds good to you and you're looking for an excuse, go do it. There is something about getting in the gym and still getting a little savagey and, 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 and saying, hey, if I do 10 reps, cool. But if I do 12 and my training partner does 15, I guess what? I'm going to I'm going to take them and, and beat them. Have that once a week. Have that fun once a week. It's like a pickup game for your basketball buddies on, on the weekend. You know, you kind of go and you kind of do it. So have those workouts mixed in with your basic, you know, safe, go in, train, get out. Um, I think you need both. I think you need both because the fact of the ones where you take the leash off and get in the fight are going to be the ones you remember most. And also when things get hard, they're also going to be the ones that go, I did this last week. And I know the diet and family or whatever it is is getting my way today, but I'm going to go in because I know I did that. And so that's my recommendation. And, and CT wasn't being mean. He's just being honest to you guys. And, 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 and the approach that you guys talk about when you see somebody – I mean, obviously, you can watch somebody do a, a bad squat and it looks like it hurts. And I get that. But when you watch somebody that has development and has been doing it for a while, that's a little different. And so that's what he's speaking about. He's speaking about you watch Barry DeMay do a tricep push down and, and you see him moving his whole body and you go, oh, that's incorrect. No, it's not. No, it's not. You don't even need to call somebody or tag somebody. Say, hey, do you see this? You just know it's right because the man's had a tricep that looks like a Greek god's arm for over 60 years. So it's it's one of those things. you got to really understand, was the person that you're looking at and talking about and talking to good for a moment or a flash in the pan?